Hello, welcome back everybody to more GBO2. Uh, today we've actually got a, a pretty decent one. I'm, I'm mixing things up. I'm actually doing a good round for a change. Uh, and we've got the, uh, the unicorn. So we got a space match with the unicorn that came out pretty good. Um, really, I feel like everyone else was just not that great this time, but I, I digress. The scores came out pretty good, so I, I, I decided to show it off. Which, funny enough, I do tend to do really good with the Unicorn outside of Destroy Mode, which is very upsetting to me because I really like it in Destroy Mode, but it just, I, I just end up dying. I, I don't know what's up with it either. It's like It feels like the entire team always just decides, and you know what, this genuinely might it be exactly what's happening. It feels like the entire team decides that I am the biggest threat as soon as I get into destroy form and I get ripped apart. It's either that or I'm pushing way too hard when I do. It's, I mean, both are very possible, but in regular unicorn form, it has, um, it's, uh, so the stats are completely rebalanced when it switches between the two. It has a really high ranged damage, when it's in regular mode, or, or unicorn mode, I guess, and then when it goes into the, um, I guess it's, yeah, it's the NTD form. When it goes into NTD form, it loses a lot of its ranged damage, gets really high melee strength, and gains access to, I'm trying to remember everything it gains access to, I think it's just the, um, the beam Tonfa it gains access to, in addition to, oh, it gets two beam sabers instead of the one. So its entire melee kit changes, it gets really fast, it basically goes from a ranged fighter to a close range, almost raid-like combat machine. You are not going to see that form at all in this match, I am just shooting. And honestly, in a space match, Kind of makes sense a little bit. Like, the Unicorn definitely has tools for getting in close and doing some serious damage in NTD form, but especially against a team that just sticks together like they currently are doing, that, that's just death. I mean, I ended up dying anyway, so... I guess it didn't make that much of a difference. I, I probably... Well, I, if I popped it, I probably would have died quicker. Anyways, yeah. So... I don't end up using it this time, partially because everything's just a little too far away through for a lot of it. Uh, popping it would result in me having to try to close way too deep on targets that are just pumping a lot of damage at me. If, if I'm trying to like push up on like a grouped tar a bunch of targets that are way out in the distance, yeah, that's not going to end well. Currently, we can see we we don't have the lead. The enemy actually has a really substantial lead. Now, I guess it's 700. Six, yeah, it is 700. Yeah, and 700, that's going to... Um, you, you can change the scores around pretty quickly. It's a huge, like, base score per kill at this point. But regardless, we, we, we are losing at the moment. We're starting to do a push now. We've got a lot of people back full force after having been dropped. And we, I'm glad my ally took that kill. I really should have held off on my head Vulcan so that I could secure that. But ally finished him off, so it got taken anyway, which is good. I'm going to move up here to try and take A, try to give us an extra, uh, a more forward spawn point, rather. This map only has the one waypoint, right? So you're either spawning all the way back at your base, or you're spawning right in the middle of the field. So this can be... I don't necessarily want to say crucial, but it's a huge benefit to have this forward position. But unfortunately, I've got an enemy pilot trying to... Preventing me from actually taking the waypoint. Couldn't manage to finish him off. And I think it was the funnels from that new Gundam that ultimately did me in. Uh, that new Gundam. Maybe not that new Gundam. I'm actually not sure if it's, if it's that specific pilot or not. But one of the new Gundams on this on the enemy team. It's part of why I said I feel like some of them might just not be playing that well. Um, I'll, I'll point it out later, too, but definitely feel like they were trying a little bit too hard with the funnels when they should have been using some other stuff. Got a quick, sneaky little kill there with our beam saber. Finished him off, but now we're kind of being uh, held back by enemy pressure. Good good on them, but for some reason they just let, let off. 
So I'm just gonna move in and do what I want now. Unfortunately, I'm out of weapons, but allies stunned him, gave me an easy position to move up. I've got my, my I almost called it a shotgun, my bazooka back that shoots like a shotgun anyway. Sad that didn't get a stun, but oh well, it is what it is. Trying to get some hits with the head Vulcans while I'm waiting for other things to ready up. My rifle is probably ready at this point. Ran out of shots with the head Vulcans anyway, so we're back to Saber. Trying to move in. Unfortunately, we do have the funnels on us, and we're a little bit worse for wear now. We probably don't have a lot longer to live, but we got that kill off before we do, so that's good. So going to regroup now with the rest of the team i am not doing so well we've got a couple guys that are a little bit beaten up but okay well actually now i was about to say we're still doing okay but now we're doing less okay another instance where i should have stopped firing for a little bit i could have probably dealt with that shield pretty easily if it, well actually i could have probably taken him down before he got the shield off if i had waited for him to finish dodge rolling and then kept firing I don't know why I did that so much this round. I used to be a lot better with that. Just, they're invulnerable anyway. There's no point in continuing to fire at them with the head Vulcans when you can't even deal damage. So stop firing, wait for it to the iframes to drop, open up fire again, and now you're actually dealing damage instead of wasting all of your ammo. I used to be a lot better with that. I just, I guess I haven't really been thinking properly for some of my recent matches. It's kind of a problem. I need to play more. I think that's part of it. I think I've been uh, slacking a little bit too much. But we're moving in. We're actually fighting our opposite now. We've got a Banshee in front of us, and he just popped his destroy form too. But now we're going off and fighting something else instead. That's the Phoenix, I believe it's called. I used to say Phoenix, and then someone said Phoenix, and now I don't know anymore. It's not spelled like Phoenix, to be fair, so Phoenix is probably right. Regardless, we took down the, the, the Phoenix, and now we're once again back fighting the Banshee. Hopefully we can line up... There we go. We can line up that final finishing blow. And now we're going to move in, help Five out deal with this new Gundam down here, as I don't really see anything better to be fighting, honestly, at the moment. And that's exactly what we want to use Head Vulcans for. That shield goes down pretty fast when you get Head Vulcan shots on it. Uh, a lot of... I, I don't know exactly how it works, whether it's a number of hits to knock it out. It's probably a health pool that it has, I would imagine. Well, maybe it's a health... I don't know. It might be num volume of shots, because I've hit it with some pretty high damaging stuff, and then it just doesn't drop but having a high volume of fire weapon like the head vulcan seems to do pretty good to deal with them also melee hits if you get close enough melee just breaks right through it but yeah it, it's it can soak some pretty good damage if you're if you just try to like barrel into it like with my beam magnum for instance beam magnum's not penetrating it it's just going to get soaked into you've seen that probably a couple times already as it is i'm actually really glad though that being said how many shots with the beam magnum i've managed to hit sometimes in space i just well sometimes in general but especially in space i can uh, miss a lot of shots with that so you know i don't know for some reason the unicorn is one i tend to be pretty accurate with i can't explain that one that doesn't make sense to me but it's one of a handful of suits where it's like oh yeah i always land my hits with this one it's not like there's any difference between the accuracy between this or some of the other things, but for some reason, this one, I actually hit things with. I don't know, it's a little bit weird. Still missed a lot, too, obviously, but yeah. Yeah, so we got seven kills to our two deaths. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's, that's actually pretty solid. Uh, some of those are from sneaky shots on things that were already weakened, but hey, we take kills where we take kills. Got decent damage as well. One of our other um, allies did much better on that front though so that's that's pretty awesome glad glad to see high damage numbers from allies as well yeah unicorn's fun though i wish i got more opportunities to use the ntd form because i have so much fun with it but again i always die oh and it drains health i forgot to mention that too ntd form continuously drains your armor while it's active so that's a contributing factor to why i right i think that's right so now I'm suddenly sudden second guessing that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. But anyway, that's a contributing factor to why I always end up dying with it. Yeah, it's it's rough. It's it's a tricky one to 
Well, that's the thing. It's not even tricky to use. It's really, really good. It's just I always die with it anyway. But regardless, I'll maybe talk about that more when I actually use it. But for now, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys next time.